Misco Electric here. Happy Holidays! Today is Sunday, December 22nd, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Before we start today's episode, it is time for a holiday tradition here at the Misco Electric channel. As some of you may know, we've had the privilege of giving away dozens of e-mobility gifts worth over $20,000 in recent years. While I have no plans to covertly plant an e-bike in a viewer's home this year, it is absolutely time to get in the holiday spirit with another Go Electric Elf giveaway. This year's prizes include a cyber backpack valued at $289, some cool t-shirts from electric e-bikes, and a brand new helmet by Thousand. I will also be giving away some of my favorite Misco Electric merchandise, which you can find at miscoelectric.com, including Go Electric winter caps, lightning bolt earrings, and rings. There are two ways to enter the giveaway. First, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and comment below telling us why you tune into The Current and include the hashtag GoElectricElf. The second way is to join us on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn and comment on our Go Electric Elf giveaway posts. Winners will be notified by the end of Christmas Day. All right. On to the news. Stellantis truck brand Ram has delayed the launch of their all-electric Ram 1500 Rev until 2026. In turn, the company has decided to accelerate the rollout of the Ram 1500 Ram Charger, which is a range extender series plug-in hybrid. They said it will be available for customer orders in the first half of 2025, but we don't know when deliveries will take place. I'm not personally a fan of automobiles which burn gasoline, but this move is understandable. There are already several all-electric EV pickup trucks already on the market. Fully electric options from Ford and General Motors are not selling very well. Do you think Ram is making a sensible pivot to providing an unchallenged powertrain solution? Honda has teased the prototypes they will be bringing to the Consumer Electronics Show in January. Last year, I checked out their concept models from their upcoming Zero line. This is the saloon, and this is the space hub. In just a couple of weeks, I'll be there in Las Vegas to see how these designs have evolved for production. Both are supposed to begin rolling off the factory line in 2026. Honda will also introduce a new proprietary vehicle operating system, their software-defined platform, and more information about their autonomous driving plans. I'll include a link to the live stream reveal in this video's description, and you can set YouTube to notify you. Have you heard of any other announcements coming to the Consumer Electronics Show which you would like us to look into? Sound off in the comments section here and we'll make notes. Chinese battery giant CATL has announced a new standardized battery ecosystem called Chaco SEB that they intend to use to grow their battery swapping initiatives in China. Back in 2022, CATL revealed plans to enter the battery swapping market with their EvoGo brand of swapping stations. The standard EvoGo battery swap station takes up a footprint of three parking spots, can stock up to 48 Chaco SEBs, and performs the swap in only three minutes. There are about 2,500 EvoGo locations currently operating in China. With the announcement for their standardized Chaco SEB ecosystem, the company said they aim to open 1,000 battery swap stations across China in 2025, with a midterm goal of reaching 10,000 stations and eventually 30,000 stations in the long term in collaboration with partners. The company says the stations ensure a 99.99% success rate for battery swap operations, and each operation requires only 100 seconds. Each standard battery swap station is equipped with 14 to 30 battery compartments, and the Chaco SEB battery modules used in the stations will include lithium iron phosphate and nickel manganese cobalt chemistries. The number 20 LFP version of the battery pack offers 42 kilowatt hours in a range of 400 kilometers with a monthly swapping plan of 369 yuan or 48 euros. The NMC version of the pack will offer 52 kilowatt hours and a range of 50 kilometers with a monthly swapping plan of 469 yuan or 61 euros. 
The larger number 25 LFP version of the battery pack offers 56 kilowatt hours in a range of 500 kilometers for 499 won or 65 euros per month. And the NMC version offers 70 kilowatt hours with a range of 600 kilometers at 599 won or 78 euros per month with the swapping plan. Along with partner automakers, CATL has already co-developed 10 new Chaco SEB compatible EV models. Those are all scheduled to launch in 2025. Owners of those EVs will be able to choose between traditional charging, battery swapping, and battery upgrades. They'll be able to lease, purchase, or even sell back their battery packs. The Chaco Swap ecosystem now has 100 partner brands and CATL said it has signed subscription agreements with 30 companies for 107,500 battery packs. Other Chinese auto companies have proven battery swapping works and has value. Neo customers have already swapped batteries more than 60 million times. As we move toward mass EV adoption in the USA, this technology seems like an inevitability here too. The question is, which brands will bring it to the market here? This week, ChargePoint and General Motors announced a partnership to install hundreds of fast charging connectors, which are slated to open by the end of 2025. The project will utilize ChargePoint's Express Plus dispensers, which can deliver up to 500 kilowatts. They'll include the Omniport system, which facilitates charging for vehicles with CCS or NAX ports without the need for adapters. This week, ChargePoint also announced the completion of six EV charging corridors in Colorado. The network includes 33 new DC fast chargers with over 80 connectors. The $14 million project was sponsored by the state, along with donations from private and local government partners. In Colorado, now 80% of Kaiway corridors in the state are within 30 miles of a fast charger. On Tuesday, the state of California voted to finalize new building codes which mandate the inclusion of EV charging infrastructure in all new residential construction projects starting in 2026. The new regulations include multifamily dwellings, apartments, and condominiums. At least one of the parking spots must be EV ready with at least a 240 volt 20 amp outlet or a J1772 or J3400 compatible EV charger. New hotels will also be required to equip 65% of parking spaces for EV charging readiness. Cities are now allowed to exceed the state limit by mandating up to 100%. Non-residential parking lots will require 20% of spaces in any commercial, office, or retail lot to be EV ready as well. In this case, cities can require up to 45%. To reduce the number of lower powered spaces required, property owners will be able to include DC fast charging instead. That could be wise for very large parking lots and structures. I have always said that overnight charging is a must when owning an EV. Highly convenient, reliable, and low-cost charging guarantees that EV ownership represents a standard of living improvement compared to internal combustion vehicles. It will be interesting to see which states follow California's lead or offer other incentive-based programs for builders to include wiring for EV charging. In some parts of California, EV drivers frequently form a line to use public DC fast chargers. Policies like this will reduce DC fast charging wait times, improve convenience, and shift times of demand on the local electrical grid. This is a win-win. As the current presidential administration draws to a close, the Department of Energy has announced more loans and grant approvals across the EV sector. This week, three more have been posted. The first is the closing of a loan that was announced last summer that we mentioned in episode 39. The proposed conditional loan was for $9.2 billion and was to be issued to Ford Motor Company's joint venture project with SK Innovation, Blue Oval SK LLC. The DOE has now begun to issue the loan with a final figure of $9.63 billion, making it the largest loan ever granted through DOE's Advanced Technology Vehicles Manufacturing Program. The funds are intended for construction of up to three battery manufacturing plants, supplying cells to future EVs from Ford and Lincoln. The three facilities, one plant located in Tennessee and two are under construction in Kentucky, are designed to produce up to 
120 gigawatt hours of batteries annually combined. The projects are scheduled to create more than 5,000 construction jobs, followed by 7,500 operations jobs. The next DOE loan was dealt to Novonix Limited, a battery materials company partnered with Panasonic, Stellantis, and Volkswagen's battery partner, PowerCo. Novonix has been offered a $754.8 million conditional loan from the DOE for the construction of a new synthetic graphite manufacturing plant in Chattanooga, Tennessee. $692 million of the loan will be in principal and $62.8 million in capitalized interest. The proposed facility is set to have an initial production capacity of 31,500 tons annually, which can support the production of lithium-ion batteries for approximately 325,000 EVs each year. The loan aims to reduce U.S. reliance on foreign graphite, particularly from China, where over 95% of the world's battery-grade synthetic graphite is currently produced. If finalized, the loan would cover approximately 73% of the eligible investment needed for the project. More Department of Energy funds were directed to the American Battery Technology Company in the form of a $144 million grant. The gift is scheduled to commence on January 1st in order to support construction of the company's second lithium-ion battery recycling facility. This operation is set to increase their battery materials processing capacity by 100,000 tons per year. The company aims to create 1,200 construction jobs followed by 300 operations jobs. Last week, we visited Colorado to check out the production intent version of the Lightship AE-1 long-range all-electric travel trailer. The team has implemented many changes since we published our coverage of the L1 prototype last year. Even if you aren't among the 10% of American RVing families, I'd encourage you to check out the video. This is a new category, and Lightship is swinging for the fences. I've included a link in the description below so that you can learn about the AE1, which will start hitting streets in about six months. Thank you for watching The Current each week and for sharing our videos with others who may enjoy what we do. Your attention and support helps us to produce this show as well as hundreds of other videos on this channel and on our other channels at Misco Electric Industry and Misco Electric Ride Reviews. Don't forget to comment below with the hashtag GoElectricElf for your chance to win excellent Misco Electric merchandise and these other prizes for the holidays. Happy holidays and until next week, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.